I hurried down the usual route I took to Alba Dorm, but... Something was different. Something wasn't the same as it had been before. Something was wrong. I just come by this path on the way home from school, but... So what was this strange dissonant feeling? <laughs> hmm? Oh, sumo stickers. The walls, the fence, the streetlights, stickers were staring at me from all directions. And all of them were real. Not one of them was fake. Hmm. Okay, I was thinking like, I don't know, I, for some reason I thought like, um, the ones that appear in the crime scenes, they were also fakes, right? Because they don't, I mean, they're not literally the same as the one you see on the Rorschach image. You know, I believe the Rorschach image, like, they cut off at the, the mouth, you know, around this area. You don't really see the eyes and the hair, I guess. But I think, I don't know, I don't remember exactly what it was. But I guess, you know, he means like the ones that people imitated, I guess. Those ones were, weren't were exactly the Rorschach image. It's the ones that are, are the ones that show up. In the actual crime scenes, I guess they're real too, I guess. Hmm. Well, it was that eerie 11 Rorschach image. The scenery in front of me suddenly warped and twisted. I felt the mountain view I just drank coming back up my throat and, and I tried my best to keep it down. No, even if Arumura and Kunisato were right and I did have some kind of power, it was only a tiny little power which I couldn't master and wasn't even good for anything. <laughs> Babies, all right. <laughs> I heard a strange voice from somewhere, like a cat in heat. <laughs> what? Lude. No, this was a cat girl in heat. Is this ne Neko Powder? It was uh, the sound of a baby crying. But I doubted there were any babies in this park. So what was this? What was that voice? And then, all the stickers that were staring at me smiled. Smile. And then slowly, <laughs> slowly, their eyes. Yeah, those are eyes. Opened. <laughs> I ran as fast as I could, not caring where I went. You need to go to Caruso's place, don't you? Anyway, I just need to escape from the life of Rorschach somehow. But... <laughs> I guess they're everywhere. It would've been nice if the art artist actually drawn, you know, the sumo stickers in the scenery, but we just get like an overlay and get, uh, instead, I guess. No matter where I went, No matter where I went. Hey! That's what it says on the poster. Uh, here. And here. And here. It's a lot of running. There's so many of them. Were there really this many sumo stickers in Shibuya? How did I never notice?
It's just I don't know. Without, I mean, even with context, it's just a little funny that Takaru is just running from stickers. You know? He's, he's just not a fan. No matter where I went, it was like they were following me. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. I had no idea how long I've been running from the phantoms of the sumo stickers. But no matter where I ran, the whole city of Shibuya was covered in sumo stickers. And each time I saw one, I felt sick, dizzy as if I was going to throw up. Add that, add that to the exhaustion from running and I was barely able to stand. <laughs> Just when I reached the conclusion that there was nowhere left in Shibuya for me to rest anymore, <gasps> I saw a silhouette crouched in an alley. It was a person clutching their arms to their tiny body. They looked like a stray cat. It was so different from the girl I was used to that at first I thought I must be mistaken. I'm dropping frames. Oh no, I came back. Okay. I thought my, my internet was gonna like be gone. Well, let's see. I should double check. You know, last time my internet was, uh, you know, exploded basically. It was like the ISP's problem. And even though it looked like OBS was still streaming or whatever, it, it wasn't actually. Uh, it looks fine, I think. It says here, you're connected to the internet. Mm, okay. Anyway, let's continue. But when she looked up, I saw that it was her. <gasps> Arimura. No, Arimura. I thought it was the, the little girl. I thought it was like Uki or something. But no, it's Arimura. Miyashiro, senpai. What are you she looks scared too. Are you seeing a bunch of sumo stickers around town too? Adamura pointed behind her but then turned around. But that was enough to tell me what she was pointing at. I didn't want to admit it. If I admitted it, that would mean that I had a special power like Arumura, and that my life would be in danger. When we think about it, I mean, you know, how did how is Arumura surviving? You know, she has special powers too. Well, I mean, she did get involved with that one time in Love Hotel. Maybe she was supposed to die, but then she survived somehow? I don't know. That would mean that instead of me going after the case, the case would be coming after me. Oh no. Yeah, I mean, there was a popular. I mean, we saw on the news, apparently, most of them are fake, but maybe even if they're not the same exactly, they're having the same effect on us or something? Is that what it is? You know, everyone else is copying the fad, and it seems like if you see on TV, it's not, you know, not too bad, but then as it turns out, actually, because they're so similar, it's becoming blurred whether, you know, it doesn't matter, like, it doesn't matter if it's, like, ex exactly drawn the way as the 11 Rorschach image, even if they're just similar now, the more there is, the more effect it has on you now, or something. Almura's voice was so soft that it was so uh, it was hard to hear her. Hmm. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just that I don't know. Maybe they are they do just know. Like maybe the the real stickers, you know. 
or just simply becoming more popular. <laughs> you know, they're getting it right. Ironically. <laughs> とりあえず青葉院へ行こう。僕やクルスが育った養護施設だ。そこなら診察室があるから具合が悪くても休める。はい。すみません。立てるか。それくらいはできます。She forced herself to smile, then ignore my outstretched hand and soap on her own. Now oh, here's another waifu in my harem, probably. Just inviting her to my old home. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, Kurusu. I'm inviting this strange girl into the home. No, I guess. Well, no, they do. They do know each other. Anyway, getting to Alba dorm was a miserable experience. I could feel the influence of the sumo stickers increasing with every step I took. <sighs> Or so she said, but she didn't look good. I wasn't in a position to be worrying about anyone else either. That was the one thought that drove me forward. But, suddenly... Oh, hey, what's up? Hello, revenge lady. She appeared before us. A woman. It was a woman with a strange presence. She's very smelly. She hasn't bathed. If uh, we'd been on one of Shibuya's typically crowded streets, I doubt I would have never. I, I doubt I ever would have noticed her. But on this empty street, she was impossible to miss. Her long hair covered most of her face, and with the streetlight to her back, I couldn't read her expression at all. I could see the strange, hungry light that shone from her eyes through the thick hair that otherwise concealed her features. It was a dark light, one that somehow brought a deeper blackness, not illumination. Adamura's voice was shaking. Again, it was weird. I don't know, maybe it's the official localization, but it changed the senpai to like his name. You know, even though senpai is a thing in Japanese, but uh, she realized how strange the woman was, too. And then, my eyes met hers. The next instant, <laughs> she laughed, or so it seemed to me. Her laugh was empty, but at the same time, somehow satisfied. It was a laugh like evil itself. It was like nothing I'd ever heard before in my life. And then, in a raspy, unpleasant voice, she spoke. <laughs> yes, I didn't realize we were playing hide and seek. Is it your turn to hide? Okay. I wonder what that's, I don't know, what is this scar? I mean, I assume, I mean, she's, she's the girl, right? She's the girl that has been ex being experimented on. Uh, Minama, Mi, Minami, Sawa, Minami, something. Why do I fear her name? Senri, right? Senri? Minami, Sawa, Senri? Hmm. Seems to be, I mean, she also, it was mentioned before in the very beginning that she seems to hide, you know, her entire body with like clothing. So I imagine she's like covered in scars as well. Hmm. Alarm bells went off my mind. And also, did she, wasn't she the one that, you know, scratched off her name in the memorial or whatever and, you know, broke her nail? And aren't you gonna get that looked at? Do you still have, like, a broken nail in your glove? That's kind of... Isn't that... Wouldn't that be a nuisance? Anyway. Alarm bells went off in my mind. Uh-oh. A crazy pink-haired anime girl. You know what that means. My knees started to buckle. My instincts told me that she was dangerous. Adamura was staring at the woman, not moving a muscle. Though she probably couldn't have moved, even if she wanted to. It was like we were paralyzed. Senpai, 
Arimura barely got out the words. She's a gigalomaniac. A psychic. I didn't want to admit it, but just looking at the woman in front of me was enough to dash all my hopes. This woman, her very existence was enough to make me believe. For some reason, I'd... Uh, sure, why not? I didn't know about any of the Giganomaniacs' powers besides Aramura's, but from what I've seen so far, some of them were a lot more dangerous than the ability to tell when someone was telling the truth. There had to be more types, for instance ones that could be used as weapons. And there was no doubt in my mind that this woman had that sort of power. If I had to guess, well, I don't know if she has it, but someone is burning up those stickers, right? Someone is a psychic and has, you know, fire powers. What's it called? Pyrokinesis, you know? I don't know. Could it be her or it could be someone else? It didn't matter whether I believed or not. How could I have? Uh, how could I not have the information I needed at a time like this? Clairvoyance. Clairvoyance EX. Arimura's eyes were fixed on a single point. She probably couldn't look away. Hmm. Well, it wouldn't make sense. I mean, you know, for example, assuming she can, like, uh, summon fire, it wouldn't make sense for, for her to just kill us with just direct fire if she is the killer of the new generation madness cases. Uh, you know, our deaths would much be much more imaginative, imaginative than that. Well, the women started walking sluggishly toward us. Slowly, slowly. I finally realized that the reason she seemed to be off balance as she walked was that she was dragging one leg. Maybe she injured it, or maybe it had never worked right. She approached us one step at a time as if enjoying our fear. <laughs> you see a doctor lady? I mean, we're going to a clinic. We invited her to you know, like the doctor and fix her leg, I don't know. She took another step. A horrible smile was frozen on her face, and also bathed her. She's really smelly. Her eyes were looking straight at us, as if she didn't want to let her prey escape. <laughs> but my body wouldn't move. My body had turned to stone, as if I'd been stared at by Medusa. Ah yes, Ryder is here too. And then suddenly, the wind blew. The woman's long hair flew up. I could see just a little of her face, and she's probably really cute. Cause that, that's how it works. Aramura gasped. I mean, well, the woman had been terribly burnt. Her face was covered in horrible burn scars. Okay, that's that's what that makes me again. I, is is she the arsonist? I don't think she's a bad guy, actually. She's the person that's been like burning all the sumo stickers. She's an ally, not an enemy. It seems like anyway, maybe. The smile disappeared from her face. Instead, it was replaced by raged. Okay, maybe she's not all that... I mean, well, it's because of the facial expression, but I guess she's not looking all that cute right now. I was thinking like, you know, the, the face, you know, the hair would blow out and she actually has like a cute waifu face, but... Eh. Well, what it does remind me of is, uh, what's that, what's that game? What's that other visual novel? I forget what it's called. It was like, you know, pretty popular for a while among, uh, you know, Western fans, the anime visual novel. I mean, it was created by 4chan, I think. What's it called? Damn it, I forgot. 
Uh, Katawa Shoujo. Yeah, one of the waifus in that visual novel had a very similar backstory where, you know, she, her face was like burnt. But anyway, there's nothing there but burning rage and the color of anger. She slowly brought her hands up and then pushed them out toward us. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. I thought she was an ally, but no, she. I guess we die. But there you go, she has firepowers. Okay, so I was right, she did have firepowers. Elmora screamed and put uh, put at my hand as hard as she could. She's a firebender. A pillar of flame sprung up right where I was standing. There was a blast of heat and the awful stink of burning asphalt. A burning pain ran down through my cheek as the heat struck it. Adokinesis. Though... She hasn't killed anyone, right? I mean, that's, the, that's how you like... That's how you can tell who's a villain or not. If someone, if, if if a character has already killed a bunch of people already, they're basically irredeemable and they'll never, you know, be an ally. Um, but as far as I know, no one has been killed by fire yet, right? I think. So she hasn't killed anyone. She might kill us though. <laughs> there you go. Oh, her eyes as well, I guess, is also burnt. Interesting. She waved her arm, and the next moment, the space in front of me was a sea of crimson flames. Anamura and I tried our best to get away from the fire. I knew that meant the ability to create fire. If I remember right, it was the word created by a famous novelist. Uh -huh. I didn't know that, but... All over the world, there were historical records of unexplained fires breaking out for no clear reason. Spontaneous human combustion. Where a human body was suddenly burst into flame was one form those incidents took. Of course, spontaneous human combustions was considered pseudoscience, as most scientists believe those incidents were actually caused by static electricity or EM waves. And now, real pyrokinesis was happening right in front of me, because this is like, you know, a visual novel. It's just science fiction, so... Obviously, pseudoscience becomes real. The next thing I knew, the woman was stretching her hands out toward me. Wait, don't kill me. What are you doing? No. I rode along the ground with Arumura at almost the exact same moment the fire exploded outward. The smell of burning hair stung my nostrils. <laughs> my hair is on fire. We kept moving away, only barely, do uh, barely dodging the burning flames. Pillar after pillar of fire appeared behind us. It looked like the flames had spread to a bike and some uh, garbage that were lying by the roadside, but I didn't have time to check. The woman was getting closer, dragging her leg as she walked. We should like run. We have an advantage, you know. She she has she keeps dragging her leg, so I guess she can't run. I tried to grab her hand and run, but. A fire appeared right in front of us, and as we tried to dodge it, we both lost our balance and fell to the ground. The planter next to us was on fire. I looked up as the footsteps got closer, and saw that the woman was right on top of us. She's gonna kill us. Well, that was what was going through my mind as I lay there, frozen in terror. I was thinking, like, you know, was, was gonna say that in the voice. Did he voice act that? I didn't hear it. I don't know. Maybe the music's too loud or something. You couldn't hear what he said. This wasn't an anime or a movie. I, or ironic. You have to keep saying that because it is. It is an anime. I mean, sort of. I mean, not literally an anime, but you know, it's an anime story. And there's also an anime adaptation. But anyway, this was reality. The pain from where I hit my leg when I fell, the pain from the burns. 
all these flames the smell of melted asphalt. It was all real. Kunasato said that the Gigalomaniacs' power came from delusions, and not just any delusions. Those delusions affected the brain of others, and through being shared, they became reality. Yes, I get it. Matrix. It's like hacking the world, you know? Which reminds me of Steins Gate, actually. Is in the opening for Steins Gate, like, hacking the gate, you know, or hacking the world or something like that? Anyway. Yes, and because of that, impossible pyrokinesis was happening right in front of me. And that power was gonna kill me and Arimura. The illusion of flames would become reality, and in that reality, we were going to be burnt to death. Oh. Okay. Also, she's crying blood? No, no, not anymore, I guess. Before she was. The woman is slowly pointing her hands toward us. Maybe I was imagining it, but the air around me seemed to grow hotter. I don't want to die. I don't want to be roasted there by these flames. Actually, you're actually dying from like, uh, be on fire, you know, is actually quite painful, as it turns out. No, I don't want to die. One of the most painful ways to die, actually. Actually. I still. A bigger spiral flame than any we've seen before appeared before us. At the same time. <laughs> There's the sword. If I had to guess, it's someone we know. Something strange appeared in the corner of my eye. Frighteningly, frighteningly sharp, but frighteningly fragile. Infinite and f finite. Phantasmal, noble phantasm? No, ph a phantasmal and real. Like all the ugliness and beauty in the world have been compressed into one object. Mm. It was a D sword. At first, you know, I thought it was like. Well, I don't know, we'll see. I'm, I don't know. It was clearly a different shape than Arimura's, but still, I could see. I mean, it's not Arimura, it's not Kunasato. Kunisawa has a different sword, as far as we know. Unless maybe that's not her sword, but... In which case, it's somebody else. But, uh, but since I didn't know how to draw it, I just desperately struck the wind with every delusion I could muster. Oh, okay, well, is it us? Is it us doing that? I don't know, I thought it was someone else saving us. Hmm, well, whatever. I imagine the sword slicing through her flames. And flung that image at her with my imagination. I guess the power of imagination. <laughs> imagination. Okay, I thought, I don't know, for some reason I thought it was somebody else saving us. For some reason I thought it was Kurusu saving us. It would make sense, but I guess not. It's just us, you know, we just did it. Because we're the best, I guess. The burning fangs that threatened to engulf the two of us exploded. <laughs> And then the fire danced like a snake. It flew in a straight line toward the woman who had created it. <laughs> the fire turned into a spiral that leapt at her. She fell over in shock. Senpai, <laughs> I don't know. A summon a giant anime cosplay sort. Don't worry about it. Because I can, I can imagine things, they become real. I don't know. Was that my power? The power of being the main protagonist and the power of my plot armor? While I've been looking, the desert had vanished from my vision. Okay. Because I thought that hand was like somebody, again, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't remember, I suddenly fell silent. I turned to see what she was looking at. 
as the air rippled from the smoke and the heat of the flames. The woman slowly stood up. I mean, she, I imagine she's very resistant to her own fire, so... I gasped at the color of her eyes. The fire that had been there a moment ago was gone. The light that burned with hatred was gone. There is only ice. Her eyes were ice, frozen, emotionless, and piercing. Aramura and I couldn't move. Slowly, slowly, with an unsteady rhythm, the woman approached us. Oh, oh you're approaching us? And then stopped a few steps away. Smoke was rising off a garbage bin behind us. The planter by our side was making crackling noises from the heat. There's nowhere to run before us, behind us, or anywhere else. I couldn't even hear the bustle of the town, but the beating of my heart sounded even louder. The sound of my saliva running down my throat, the sound of my breathing, the sound of my blood flowing. All of those sounds offered proof that I was still alive, but soon they would be gone. They will all disappear as I die, inside the burning flames. My legs shook. My eyes blurred with tears. Okay, it's, it's funny how like, oh, I saw my super anime sword and then, nope, never mind. As it turns out, we're just gonna die anyway. I could barely speak. But the woman's expression didn't change, not even a little. And as she raised her hand toward me, I closed my eyes. I was... I was going to... Huh? I slowly opened my eyes, and then... No, she just left. Okay. The woman was gone. She's like... Uh, never mind. And then she just she just walked away. I guess. Was I saved? All the strength drained from my body, and I collapsed to the ground. I thought I was a goner. I thought she would kill me for sure. No, until a moment ago, she was definitely going to kill me. I mean, so probably she saw her like she probably saw his D sword and then you know thought against it i guess i could tell from her eyes they were cold without a trace of doubt uncertainty and or hesitation so why has she suddenly disappeared <sighs> i looked up and saw that Arimura was standing there staring at the spot where the woman had disappeared Senpai. It turns out there's another one that also shoots flames or something. Okay. Is that it? Could you like summon a sword too? You could have helped us. You had a D sword too, don't you, Adamura? Anyway. Maybe it's not made for combat. Ironically, being a sword, but anyway. After the attack by the pyrokinetic woman, I finally fled with Adamura to Alba Dorm. Oh, we kind of finally got our des to our destination. I could probably get treatment for my burns here. <laughs> The front door was locked. I've been so busy running that I've forgotten how late it was. I've been giving a key, uh, given a key to the dorm, but I didn't usually carry it on me. When I lived here, there was a spare key hidden in the grounds. I decided to look for it. Okay. Is this like, I don't know, does it feel like 
a bad thing to do. You know, you know how like sometimes people like hide a key under their carpet or something at the at the entrance. Sounds like a bad idea, though. I don't know. I mean, I guess you're betting on the fact that it's very hidden, so that no one else will find it. But I don't know. Fortunately, the key was right where I remembered it. Part of me thought it wasn't a good idea to leave in the same place all the time, but today I was grateful. You know, it's like using the same password for all the different websites. You know, it's just not very safe. As I went into the exam room, Aremura still stood hesitantly by the entrance. I motioned for her to sit in the exam chair. Good. I got in a little used to it, but I still didn't like the idea of touching her skin. Ew, cooties. I got some medicine, some cotton wool, and some adhesive bandages off the shelf and handed them to her. Since this was a clinic, a lot of medicines were for use by professionals, but they were labeled in clearly written Japanese, so there was no way I could screw them up. Every time a new drug came in, it was Kurus's job to make a label and stick it on. She always said that if she didn't, Yui, Yuto, and I might take some by accident. Oh no, if we took the cocaine. She always been the type to worry about things like that. I always been told to make sure to straighten out my sh uh, my shoes or to straighten my shoes up when I took them off, or not to put my socks in the laundry inside out. Okay, she made me help with a lot of cooking too, didn't she? I shook my head and shocked that I was thinking about those things when something much more important was going on. The disinfected must have stung because she was wincing. I had really meant anything by it. That was just where the conversation was leading. If she was jealous of me living alone, did that mean she wasn't getting along with her relatives? Okay. Huh? Get the wrong idea about her tragic backstory. That's right, she had that power. Having her know if she was telling the truth or not made things difficult. For everyone involved. It was probably difficult for Adam Miller herself to know what someone was really thinking, whether she wanted to or not. That sort of explained how she acted at school. Unless she kept things on a superficial level, acting like a goofball and telling jokes, she'd know what everyone really felt, and it would crush her. Actually, it reminds me. Reminds me of an anime. <laughs> Actually, another anime. What was it? School Rumble? I think there was a character like that. Where basically she also had like mind reading powers and she knew uh, whether or not someone was lying. So that's interesting. But it was less sci fi though. It was more so like slice of life, ironically. Even though it's like a superpower, you know. Sometimes, I don't know, some anime, sometimes there are like fantasy elements, but it's not made to be like the, a main a plot, you know, essential thing. It's just like. Just a side thing, I guess. This this character that somehow has supernatural powers, but don't worry about it. That's not what it's really about, you know? Anyway. 
Since Arumoto seemed to have finished, I sat down in a chair to take care of my own injuries. And at the same time, the door in the back softly opened. Oh no, it's no no. I'd hope that Kurusu would be asleep. No, I'd actually come here to talk to her about something important. But after the pyrokinetics attack, I decided against it. If she saw me injured like this, she would have been worried, so I plan to talk to her tomorrow instead. And then she realized there was another girl in the room. <laughs> okay, going back to her Genki girl personality out of nowhere. I wasn't out on some kind of weird late night date with her and then we got into a big fight where both of us got hurt or anything like that, Baka. But before I could say something which would probably only make her more suspicious, Kurusu saw us both and went pale. I knew this was coming. Her own injury hadn't healed yet, so when I saw how worried she looked, it pricked at my heart. Kurusu grabbed the medicines I was carrying and started to patch me up. いやいや、もう大丈夫っすよ。私はもう自分で。そんな適当な処置じゃダメ。後になったらどうするの。でも、でもは聞きません。分かったわね。お、はい。Chris's no nonsense attitude was enough to overwhelm even Arumura. She sat still and let Chris do whatever she wanted. When she was finished, she started on me. More was I supposed to tell her? できるだけ驚かさないように伝えるべきなんだろうけれど。えっと。私たち襲われたんです。Yes. Arumoto came straight out and told her while I was hesitating. By the way, does Arumoto know that Kurusu knows? You know, it's like, does, does she know that she knows that she knows? I don't know. Anyway, I guess it doesn't matter. Kurusu's expressions are to cloud over because normally when you think, you know, when you're talking about psychics, normal people would just call you crazy, right? But Kurusu does know, at least she was told by Serika and everything, but I don't know if like Aramura knows that she knows, but anyway. I glared at her, but Aramura just shook her head. あ、あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ。あ
見えますかそれえ Only then did I realize Oh, isn't that the sword? I've been so busy talking that I hadn't noticed but something had appeared in the corner of my vision これは When I remember the terror I felt during the attack had it brought this back as well? There's no mistaking it My D sword I whispered the words to myself and tried to visualize it more clearly. And then. The hazy, indistinct image began to take shape. I reached out my hand toward the bizarre object. But. If this becomes a shonen, that but at the end. Anyway. I mean, come on, it's a sword, it's probably going to be a sword battle, and the finale, I don't know, anyway. For some reason, I couldn't touch it. Takuru? Nani o shiteiru no? Ken ga aru nda, koko ni. Ken? Yappari daseru yo ni natta n desu ne. Jibun no disodo. Aramura said. Jibun no? Hai. それが先輩のディソードですよディソード An illusionary sword that could only be seen with the power to make delusions or could only be seen with the power to make delusions real yeah. 僕はやっぱり能力者なのかだからずっと言ってるじゃないですかそうだってじゃあさっきの女あれはやっぱり僕をだと思います私を狙った可能性ももちろんありますけど<笑> What I've been afraid of had become real Yes, what I've been afraid of This turning into like a shonen anime Like they throw out the murder mystery plot And it just turns into like a sword battle anime <sighs> Anyway, <laughs> that woman Her eyes Her appearance. Her flames. Hopefully not. I don't know. It's just that, again, I said this before, but when you introduce supernatural elements into like a murder mystery, the mystery part kind of like, you know, dies. So like, it just becomes, I guess, murder fantasy. You know, murder fantasy. Or murder fantasy anime. I don't know. The murder marks on our bodies told me that this wasn't a dream, it was real. At this rate, I will be killed like the victims in Don't Look at Me and Revolving Dead. Why was this happening to me? Kurosu suddenly interrupted our conversation. What is it? You know everything I know. Tell me. どうしてですか誰が何のためにこんな事件を起こしているのか調べるのお,おい Stunned, I lean in toward Kurusu. お前事件には関わるなってずっと言ってでももう遅いんでしょこの先もタクルや有村さんが狙われるかもしれないのよねクルス I had noticed earlier that something seemed a little strange about Kurusu. She told me so many times not to get involved in anything dangerous, I was sure when I told her what happened tonight she freaked out. That's why even when I fled here, I still hadn't wanted to see her. But after I told her, instead of looking angry or raising her voice, her expression was firm and resolved. <laughs> セリカから聞いてるかもしれないけど話しておきたいことがあるのあああ実は私あなたに言ってないことがあって言ってないこと I felt a sudden pain in my heart Her words reminded me of last time when I was told that my parents were murdered When I found out that the family rule of the Alba dorm that nobody kept secrets didn't apply to me, just everyone else. 
when I found out I was the only one person who was different from the rest of my family, and I knew Kurusu remembered it too. She had almost brought herself to the verge of saying something, but her memories came back and stopped her. She kept opening and closing her mouth, only to finally fall silent. I almost never saw her like this. Kurusu, I'm okay. I balled my hands tightly into fists, as if I was trying to tell this to myself too. Probably. Was I just imagining things, or did Kurutsu's eyes get a little wet? She's blushing slightly. I don't know. That's not. I couldn't bear to look at her, so I continued. And then she slowly started to speak. This is what she said. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I know this. I never even expected that. Takaru didn't expect it. Kurusu was involved in the case. What did she mean? この前あなたたちが忍び込んだっていう病院ね。うん。え、その病院の地下のこと。私前から知っていた。And how do you know about it? She's not a she, no, she's not a scientist, I don't think. So the only other way she would know about it is huh? Well, then again, well, I don't know, maybe that's not what she's getting at, is what I'm thinking in my head that I'm not saying out loud because it might be a spoiler, you know, until she actually says it. I could believe what I was hearing. At the very, I mean, at the very least, um, she has that connection with uh, Minami Sawa Senri, so there's that, obviously. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It was so sudden and surprising that I couldn't even follow it. The basement under AH Tokyo General Hospital. She knew about that terrifying place? Why? How? Mm -hmm. well, the thing is, I don't know. Because I'm thinking like, you know, if, if she didn't know about the basement, that would be plausible because she might have known about Senri, but she didn't know about the basement or whatever. Because, you know, Senri like disappeared somehow or whatever. Um, I don't know. But then... But she does, so... Again, I'm thinking... But we'll see. <laughs> I think I know why she knows. Look at that flashback very care uh, flashback very carefully. I just saw myself from reaching out and grabbing her by the shoulders. Kurisu paused and looked away. And then she showed me the phone in her hands. There was a picture on the phone. Peace. Happily smiling boy and two girls. <laughs> Again? Why Why does he look so feminine anyway? <laughs> because of his pose maybe, I don't know. And also I guess, is this, I guess middle school? Is middle school? I don't know. They don't look all that different though. Anyway, the picture was old, but I recognized one of the girls as Kurusu and the boy as Kawahara. And there was a girl with them who had very gloomy eyes. Is it gloomy? It's, I guess it's drawn, you know, there's like, tends to be two ways to draw eyes in anime. It's the round way, and then the sharp way, I guess. And that's the only difference. I don't, I don't know if it's gloomy. It was, out, it was without a doubt the girl whose data I see in the facility. The one called Minamisawa Senri. Also, she controls fire. By the way, you know, I don't know if you put the pieces together yet, Takuru, but she, she, she's like... 
you know, he was the one fire bending in your face. It was during the culture festival. Kawahara has said. ごくに。俺と後もう一人。自信で信じまったけど、南沢ってやつはいつもクルスと一緒にいた。三人でよくつるんでたんだよ。うん。いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、
お前のことまだよくわからない正直信じていいのかどうかもなるほどそうでしょうねでもなんていうか今は悪いやつじゃないような気がしてるんだだから聞いておきたいんだけどだから何をですお前は少なくともその僕らの敵じゃないんだよな<笑>お前のせいで僕の大事な誰かが死んだりしないよな<笑>I remember the thought for a moment as she looked at me and Kurusu in turn. And then. Ma, Saki wa Miyashiro senpai ni taskete morai mashta shi. On wa ada de kaesu ってのもどうかと思うんで誓っときます私のことは先輩たちの味方だと思ってて問題ないですよそっかおっとただしベタベタ慣れ合ったりするのとか大嫌いなんでその辺はよろしく Then she smiled just a little. That maybe have been the first time I've seen a real smile from her. <laughs> <laughs> 